What's up everybody? Got the Polaris Razor Pro XP back to my shop finally. Had a rough go at it at King of the Hammers. Um, hate that I did not finish any of the uh, video series that I was doing of the build up of this thing along the way. But um, we just ran out of time. I'm not even gonna lie. We got um, down to it and we just kind of ran out of time. Um, we got everything finished though. Ended up getting wheels and tires on the lake bed from Walker Evans and MRT. Walker Evans brought me some new shocks. We did not get the velocities in this time. Um, we had a chance to run them for the race itself. Um, but we actually had gotten these tuned up pretty good, so we decided to run with those. And they worked pretty good, so we just let them ride out. They were awesome, actually. Um, so yeah, we got the car finished up, and uh, man, it was it fast. So, um, not sure if some of y'all watched the old video. Uh, the first video that was initial, uh, my review of this, it was the Polaris Razor Pro XP Racers review. Um, it was, everything still stands with it. Um, I'm so impressed with this machine. Um, everything about it is just really incredible. The extra wheelbase is, is uh, super smooth and stable throughout the whoops and the, the rough stuff in the middle of the desert. And in the rocks, it gives you a little bit more confidence on like vertical climbs and drops as well. Um, just that little bit makes a big difference and very impressed with it. So not taking anything away um, from that side of it at all. But unfortunately, once we got the King of the Hammers, um, we had a great week of pre-running um, and we qualified top 20 and we were running top 10 and about mile 30 we rolled um, doing 70 miles per hour and totaled this thing so do not want anyone taking um, this video and running with it and saying that these things are weak like people were commenting on my original video saying that I'm gonna learn real quick how weak these frames are and whatnot um, I think that y'all lost y'all's minds if you think that this thing took a 70 mile an hour tumble and um, the majority of the damage was caused to the additional stuff that we actually added on like the front bumper caused a cave in of the factory frame that's us you know that's something we did so we can ram people the rear bumper wasn't on there, probably would have destroyed the bed. But you know what? It collapsed and it smashed the frame. Bad design, whatever, call it what you want. But you know what else? The rest of the frame is straight. Get all the panels out of here right now. We're about to start taking this thing all the way down. I got a new chassis coming in because this one's all one piece welded. But everything's straight on here. Like I would totally just let this thing ride out and go. But you know, we had a little bit of a front end failure ripped some bolts out down there we bent a uh, ball joint carrier kind of messed this up a little bit um, but uh, people that were saying that this thing's weak and it's gonna be wrecked and all these negative thoughts and naysayer crap that would be said on my video I think they're just they're just ignorant to be honest with you I'm just I'm disappointed that people are so quick to judge this car um, and say that it's a piece of crap because you have sadly mistaken. This car is extremely fast, it's extremely stable, and you know, in 2019, we raced a 2018 XP Turbo, and that car was fast, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't as fast as this thing, and, and I mean, honestly, I, this car is so fast and so stable, it's probably honestly what led up to the fact that we did crash, uh, because I was able to push the car. I mean, it was so fast, so smooth, so stable, and it was a confidence booster for me. And with not as much seat time in this car, um, I think it probably led to um, a little bit of a, a misread, miscalculation. We don't do a lot of desert racing. And I uh, just didn't read the dirt right, and boom. That's what happens when you're racing dust and desert. Um, so yeah, so that video is on here. I've already posted it of the crash. Uh, it's pretty gnarly. I slowed it down so everybody can see. Uh, I rolled it four or five times, but just want to kind of showcase the car the chassis and you know what Chris built at TFR engineering has held up great um, really just absolutely no problems with it and uh, yeah you know is, is stuff bent on this yep sure is look at this boom transition I man it just shows you the load path that 
we hit here initially on the roll and it transfers all to the front and boom that's just what happens but when you're doing 70 what do you expect to happen i mean if you're doing 70 in a any car on the road and you roll it it's total so um you know this is a, a side by side and it, and it weighs 1700 pounds and what do you expect so um got the bcc skid plate on there not sure if we can get any shots there but it held up great it's a must um and there's the only dent that we got in the lower half of the chassis um it's on this side it was not a big deal knew it was going to happen but it is what it is there they are the two ones um i mean you can call that cheap you can call it whatever you want to but um you know, I've wheeled Jeeps all my life and full-size rigs and built heavy-duty rock sliders, and they still look like that after you go riding through the Hammers trails. So, hate all you want. I don't care. Um, so, again, this is uh, the Pro XB. After you roll it about six times at 70 miles per hour. So, uh, backstory to all that, though, moving forward, um, the car is awesome. It's phenomenal. We got there super early. There's only like 200 people in the lake bed. Majority of those people were um, workers and um, Ultra 4 staff and BLM workers and stuff. So we had a ton of time to pre-run. I ran the same belt from brand new, the same belt that came in on the car up until the point where uh, we raced it. And I think it had a, about 200 miles on that point and uh, it was qualifying on that same belt. I mean, we pushed the crap out of it. We were doing 90. Um, we were shock tuning like crazy, you know, just full throttle assaults all throughout and um, everything held up extremely well. We literally had no failures on this car up until the point where we rolled it. Um, no doubt in my mind we would have finished um, mechanically, you know, that, that side of it. I don't want to, there's so many other factors that can happen if you don't wreck and you do make it to the rocks and blah, blah, blah. But um, there's definite truth to the fact that this car mechanically holds up really great stock clutching belt temps just maintained 170 degrees if you were pushing 90 you'd see 195 belt temps but they quickly cooled down uh yeah so everything is wrecked new chassis coming in should be here hopefully tomorrow we'll keep going with it um but chris had he was my co-driver of course um you can see here i use a factory seat pad over here he used a upr seat pad and uh he did not have any issues or injuries um i ended up having some back problems um and once i got home um made multiple chiropractor visits and uh they got me straightened out so thankfully i didn't have a, any fractures or anything in my back um you can see the majority of it was on this driver's side and I took the most of the impact um, as you can see it's kicked back so yeah let's go over the damage real quick um, kind of give you an update on that and where we're headed back to this is the first day I've seen it back it is Thursday um, April 2nd and this is the first time I've seen the car since I left King of the Hammers in February so front end obviously is tweaked pretty bad um, the arms ORB fabrication made for me they are actually straight. The reason why this is curved is because this whole front bulkhead that is removable has twisted and rotated. Let me get down here and show you the bolts. So they actually snap out right there on that one and uh, it has wrinkled and pulled out. So uh, not sure how good this video is gonna be, but um, yeah, so basically the whole front end of this right here has shifted over that way. Um, weak design, flawed design, call it what you want. Again, remember, I crashed at 70 miles per hour. So, um, I don't think any car on the road could survive that and say, oh, it's not totaled or it's not erect. Um, yeah, so take it for what you want. So, yeah, Pro XP. Um, Held up pretty good. We actually, you know, we put a wheel on it and I put a tie rod on it, factory tie rod, and um, drove it home. Drove it, drove it back to the trailer, put it on the trailer, and uh, it it was a it was a crappy feeling. You spend fifty grand 
you know, buying, building, and race logistics and inter entry fees and all that to get out there, and then you total it with 200 miles on it. Um, heartbreaking. Um, like I said, I haven't seen the car since I left King of the Hammers. Chris took it to his shop. He brought it to me today because I finally got a frame coming. Um, just been saving up and trying to make it happen. Don't have a ton of money and I uh, just want to take my time. I was distraught over it trying to figure out which route I wanted to go. Finally, we're just excited. We're going to kind of redo the same thing that we have done here um, and just remake it and take our time without the rush of King of the Hammers with the intention of racing UTV World Championships later on this year. So, uh, there's a wheel. This is a Walker Evans wheel. Just a cast wheel. It took a hit. Shows you how hard the hit was on my side as well. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. I don't, I don't really know if there's anything specific y'all want to see. We're gonna be taking this thing apart probably starting tomorrow. Chris is already taking it apart um, just for his own visual inspection so he can learn from it and go from there with it. Um, you can even see right there, ooh, that bar's bent. I mean, it's just crazy seeing it load past this thing. Every time I come out here and look at it, I find something else. And you can look at that. That is looking straight down and you can see how shifted over everything is that way. And uh, yeah, crush the frame, hit the intake manifold there with the intercooler pipes. Got to get all new of that. Um, yeah, lots of lots of damage. But you know, the cool part is, is that all the ORB suspension held up strong. Nothing's bent. We'll confirm that. I'm going to send it all off and let Justin take a look at it, put it in a jig. Uh, the only did other damage that we had mechanically was the shock eye on the top half there ripped out. No big deal. Broke kind of tie rod as well. We run Super ATV tie rods. Um, that one on the driver's side broke on the initial hit. So it was all good, but you can kind of see how tweaked everything is here. That drive shaft must be in that little cage off in the center, and it's not at all. Let's see how out of place it is there. But like I said, everything else mechanically held up great. Our main structure that Chris and I designed, um, it kept us safe. We did take hits on the roof, and um, it is perfectly fine. Having these in here probably saved us a lot. Um, the cage shift over a little bit. Yeah, probably just a little bit, but you know what? Kept us safe, man. You know, we were able to roll at that speed and walk away from it and uh, live to talk about it. And You know, I've seen people have the exact same wreck and have to get medevaced out. So, Sparco seats and PRP harnesses and impact helmets and uh, all the neck brace stuff that we use and and uh, just all the safety gear we used just kept us safe and you know we had all fire extinguishers and no fires happened and we were just super lucky so here we go the rebuild starts finally um it's been three months and i hate that i haven't given you any content or videos but um we're here now and we'll keep pushing thanks to the coronavirus we have slowed down at the shop uh parking lots kind of empty and dry but uh, we're just gonna start working on it in the afternoon and hopefully in a couple days we'll have a razor we can start building on again. Until then guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for the comments. Let me know if y'all wanna see anything.